Welcome back and joining us for a look at the day's market moving news is Willem Oldervacher from Nitrogen Fund Managers. Thank you so much for your time, Willem. Quite an interesting picture that we have seen there, particularly on the JSC, because it did try to stage some sort of rebound today, but then sunk back into the red. Not much, though, relatively uh, flat. But quite interesting is that we saw the resources at 10 complex actually trying to pull that boss up, particularly the PGM and iron ore stocks. Um, but of course, seeing, seeing some of the resources like coal trying to pull the resources uh, complex down. Talk to me about the direction of the market today. Sure. So I think we sort of ended fairly flat. And I think uh, you, you, st you started pointing out the, the reasons for that. I think you need to break it down into the, the individual sectors. I think firstly, in the, the financial sector today, you have to remember there were a bunch of dividends. I think ABSA, Old Mutual, oh. um, and quite a few others paid, and, and they're paying quite big yields, I mean, 4 or 5%. So I think that's already a, a large part of the sort of drawdown. Mm. And then on the positive side, NASPERS and Process were sort of starting to pull up again after you know, sort of dire first three weeks of the month. Mm. And then finally, like you mentioned, resources, which are, which are incredibly volatile. But I think today, platinum off the back of um, both platinum, palladium and rhodium prices, the, the PGM sector sort of pulled up with gold moderating. And then our, our sort of iron ore heavyweights, Anglo, BHP, Kumba, etc., also coming back from a very low sort of point in their own prices and then in the commodity they mine. I mean, iron ore is up probably 15% for the month, mm. with uh, last night being something like 5%, which is, is driven, I think, mainly by sort of Chinese demand. Okay. That um, there, there was a, a Chinese, an incredible Chinese sort of drawdown through the, the end of September, which has reverted. And um, there's been some incredible stockpiling at ports um, with the usage and the imports sort of matching that, which means the, the supply being down, especially, I don't know, if, if you saw Transnet saying we have five days in South Africa. So even though Kuma is a small part of the seaborne market, that's, that's out for, for uh -huh. at least five days. So, so very mixed results, but ultimately we ended very close to where we started. Ah, all right. Well, uh, let's take a look at uh, some economic data. I uh, want to zoom in on inflation for March, that uh, where we saw the uh, inflation print cooling down uh, from a rise to 5.6% in February, uh, now at 5.3% in March. Um, yeah, what do you make of that trajectory so far, but also keeping in mind that we're not seeing a drastic uh, cooling down on that front. Better news, but not great. Yes, I, th I think ultimately positive, especially if you compare it to sort of global inflation figures. So you, like you, you mentioned, the UK numbers this morning, if you compare core numbers globally, mm -hmm. South Africa is sort of within one or two percent of the UK and the US, which is fairly impressive given the fact that we are, are RAND based. And um, if you look at the just the trajectory of the RAND on its own, you'd think that would be a quite a strong pull on our inflation towards the upside, which I think in turn shows a very weak consumer. And we're sort of in a a snowball situation where the, the Reserve Bank needs to keep interest rates high, which keeps the um, consumer under pressure, but that doesn't do anything to input costs. So mm -hmm. you mentioned diesel prices earlier. So, I mean, we have no in influence over oil prices globally and we have to buy it in rands. So even though this number is sort of lighter than normal, it's still a very high inflation number and, and, and it's a solid um, percent or so above the, the midpoint of the guidance and very, very far above the, the, the lowest point of um, sort of sob guidance mm. so ultimately positive the rand reacted positive and um the, the only real good thing i can see from from our inflation print is that we're in in sort of recent terms sort of meaning five to ten years closer to global markets than we have been in a very long time uh, very very interesting uh, well let's go on to company news and uh, basically nothing out on the chassis today so we have to go abroad um, and talk about more expensive matters lvmh um we did see uh those shares actually climbing on that front this is even as we did see sales growth uh coming out cooler than we had seen uh, in the first quarter of the previous financial year where is this bullishness coming from over there for lvmh i mean overall global luxury has been an incredibly defensive sector which i think is is historically true so if you're looking at richmond or something like ferrari or lvmh they generally perform when when the rest of the market doesn't but the the last spurt i mean you're saying like the revenue growth numbers look look we compared to last year i mean those were incredible across mm -hmm. the spectrum so there's still a lot of momentum and it's just just the defensiveness of the sector in terms of sort of the, the Alice and consumer, you know, the, the people who, who invest or not even invest, who purchase products from those companies are less affected by inflation than sort of 
you know, lower LSM consumers. So things like, you know, general merchandise would be would be a far worse sort of place to be in sort of the times we, we're trading in or living in. So things like LVMH, the, the consumer doesn't really care and, and to some extent might see value mm. uh, due to the fact that there's an inflation hedge in their purchases. Um, I mean, something like a Birkin bag is, the, is, is worth a lot more than a gold coin. So it, it, it forms the same sort of principle and it becomes the same sort of market to a defensive item like a USD sort of deposit or a gold deposit. So I think that's where the, the strength comes from. But overall, the, the market's been incredible. And like you say, LVMH sort of powering forward at a, at a serious rate. Yeah, really, the luxury market does still remain defensive. I mean, we even saw with the De Beers uh, diamond sales, um, the cycle three for 2024, though it came out, uh, the sales came out lower than the cycle three in uh, 2023, but was better than uh, cycle two in 2024. Well, let's get to your stock pick for today, Willem. What will it be? Sure, it's going to be Supergroup, um, largely due to sort of the same sort of defensiveness. Supergroup prices in the South African market, similar to something like a Motors or even a CMH, which is, is one part of their business, but it's a much more diversified um, sort of company. So they do fleet services, which is sort of company vehicles. They do logistics, which in South Africa is an incredibly strong business because they're competing with Transnet, which is not a very strong competitor. So you're getting exposure to sort of high coal prices and potentially, you know, if, if things really go Ah. Um, wrong, yeah, down, let's say down, <laughs> yeah. um, something like manganese or iron ore prices, but overall coal prices, which have been decent if you look at something like Tungela's earnings. So you get that, and then a large part of the, the overall group earnings is based off an investment in Australia called SG Fleet, which is a fleet services business. So um, if you look at SG, so Supergroup as a company on the main, you've got a massive sort of currency hedge in Australian dollars for 20 to 30% of their earnings, and then you've got cheap businesses which are motor ship, sort of motor dealerships and um, car rentals and all of those things are doing fairly well defensively. I mean, Supergroup's earnings grow at 15 to 20% annually at a, at a very constant rate and they're paying a good dividend. So the, the stock's derated in line with sort of competitors that are maybe not mm, fair competitors or fair comparables. Mm. So I think at the, at the current price, which is sort of a drawdown of, sure, maybe 20, 30% from last year, September with, with, with earnings growth, that's, that's some of the best value you, you, you see on the JC at the moment. Ah, all right. Well, thank you so much for your time and for your insights on what has been moving investors' money today. Uh, Willem, good to have you back after the break. Uh, that was Willem Oldewacher from Nitrogen Fund Managers.